so I am about to head out, but I had a few minutes and I just wanted to make this quick video. By the way, I had mentioned earlier that I really have been enjoying using my Evelyn. This is in the PM size without a liner. And yeah, I don't know what to say about it. I actually love the fact that it's so squishy and all of my stuff just kind of sinks to the bottom. I think it's actually a really, really cute look. So again, I'll just give you a quick view. This has nothing to do with the video I had planned for the day, but I just wanted to show you guys how I have been using my Evelyn. So here you go. I just got, I got a couple more stuff to throw in here before I head out the door, but yeah. So that was kind of completely random, but I just wanted to show you guys how I've been using my bags and making a more conscious effort to use all the bags that I have. Now onto the actual topic of the video. You know how sometimes you may have like a really negative first impression about something, but over time it just starts to grow on you and you start to just change your mind. And before you know it, it's like the most beautiful thing you've ever had the privilege to lay your eyes on. Like, yeah, no, that, that has yet to happen to me for any of these following five bags. And maybe I lack a refined palette or I've never experienced their magic firsthand, but the obsession others have with these bags just continue to baffle me. So please don't get mad. This is all just for a bit of fun, especially since I am on a shopping hiatus. It's a lot easier to talk about bags I 100% would never be tempted to buy as opposed to bags that I'm lusting after currently and no additional justification is necessary to convince me to buy them. And maybe this is just a way for me to psychologically cope and rein myself in from wanting to spend money unnecessarily because I'm going to be honest, I've been struggling lately and I'm just in one of those moods to shop. You ever get like that? So let's just jump right into it. Again, if you have or love any of these bags, please don't be offended. I guarantee you, I like plenty of bags that to you may seem just as puzzling. So we're gonna start strong with the Hermes Lindy. And I'm just gonna say this holds true for all Lindys in every single size. Aesthetically, I just don't get this bag. Hermes has so, so many hits, but this to me, it's just one big giant miss. You know how there are bags that you just kind of skip over and you don't even think twice about them. And then there are bags that you do a double take, but like not in a good way. <laughs> this bag to me just looks super unput together. And don't get me wrong, especially for the larger Lindy's, I'm all for supple bags and soft leathers that shape and mold and move and that gets worn in over time. That's not what I have an issue with. So like, while the body of the Lindy isn't my favorite, it isn't terrible. Like when I see someone wearing the Lindy just by the top handles, I think it looks okay. Like not great, but okay. But I also think carrying it by the top handle only works for the larger sizes. And I use the term work very loosely here. Plus, I'm not even sure if you can carry the mini Lindy top handle because it's so tiny, it probably won't fold like the original ones. So no, the body of the bag isn't great, but it's fine. I think what I have a bigger issue with, no surprise here, has got to be the shoulder strap. I know I'm not the first to say it, but the shoulder strap feels like a design afterthought. Like the bag was designed to be solely a top handle bag, but then some higher ups were like, you know what, we need straps because kids these days, they love a good strap for added versatility. And the designer was just like, fine. I mean, I didn't design it to have a strap, but if that's what you really want, then here's an extra piece of leather. We'll just staple it to either sides of the top handle. And there you go, happy now. Me, that's how the conversation played out, which resulted in the final product. Like the Lindy just looks like it was MacGyvered into a shoulder bag, you know? I mean, it, it looks like a really bad conversion kit or DIY project, how about that? And again, don't get me wrong, a shoulder crossbody conversion kit is all the rage now, I get it, but for some bags, it just doesn't work. Like, I've legit thought of adding straps to my Picotin to increase its functionality, but that's just another example of a bag that just wouldn't work with the shoulder strap. Now, side note, I think if you did want to MacGyver an Hermes top handle bag into being a crossbody, your best option would probably be the new in the loop bucket bag, just because the areas of the bag where you can potentially hook on a strap, they just seem to be like more natural placements for where straps could go. Like you could take a strap and you could hook it on one end of the leather tab and the other to the metal chandonk buckle i think that could be converted into a very natural looking crossbody like tote looking bag as in i don't think anyone would blink an eye to think that this was not how the bag was originally designed you know but back to the lindy i do feel kind of bad because it's not even the fault of the bag even if we just take a look at the structure of the bag as is there's really not a good place to attach a shoulder strap now maybe if it was designed with like d-rings on opposite sides of the handles 
but I, I don't know. I just think either way, it will still look awkward regardless of where you try to add a strap. Another, what I'm guessing is going to be an unpopular opinion, is the Jody bag. And I'm going to be more specific here and say the mini Jody. I know, I know everyone loves the mini Jody, but does no one else think this bag looks so extremely awkward when being carried? As in handheld with a giant knot on one end. So first off, aesthetically, it's just not doing it for me. I think the bigger sizes, like even if you were just to go up to the teen size, I think that looks a lot more proportionate. Um, and functions well as a sloppy hobo bag, you know, where you can wear it on your shoulder, you get a nice slouch when the bag is filled, like it looks more proportionate. It's a specific type of vibe for sure, but I think it works. Now the mini Jody, on the other hand, to me, it lacks all the slop and all of the hobo qualities. It looks so stiff compared to the larger sizes. And then second, I have an issue with its functionality. I mean, just looking at it, you know the zipper is going to be a pain. You know it's going to fit less than you think because of all the curvature the bag has. You know it's going to be hard to get things in and out of the bag. And the top handle just doesn't seem, what's the word, like ergonomically comfortable to hold. I don't think I've seen someone hold this while looking natural, you know? Even as a forearm bag, the bag just doesn't want to lay naturally. So for that reason, I'm out. Now go up a size to the teen, and all of a sudden, I think it makes a lot more sense. Like, I don't like it enough personally to buy it, but I can see how this can be a unique silhouette for someone who's curating their collection. Also, I know it's a popular thing right now to keep shrinking classic bags down to mini sizes, and for the most part, I think it's cute when companies do that. Like, the Neverfull BB, I know another unpopular opinion, but I think it's cute. The mini or micro Marc Jacobs tote, cute. But this, this mini Jody, like, this is more awkward than it is cute. Now, speaking of, awkward and cute. I know there are all of these rumors floating out there about an even more shrunken down Birkin, I believe it's the Birkin 20. Legit, I have no idea how you are supposed to carry that thing. Also, if you are still here, thank you so much for watching this and joining me on my mini rant today. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Here we love to talk about all things related to life learning and luxury. As a business professor by day and a luxe lover by night, I'd love to grow this channel so we can all continue on our journey towards more mindful consumption, especially if like me, you have a teensy obsession when it comes to a good handbag. For this next one, I'm just going to come out and say it. The Chanel 22 is a glorified trash bag. I cannot think of another way to describe this, and I cannot be the only one who feels that way. This does not look luxurious at all. Everything about this bag screams, I have issues. I as in the bag, not you, just to clarify. Now, I don't see how the leather wouldn't get torn up especially where it's supposed to scrunch. I don't see how the lettering on the front wouldn't just pop right off. And for what, $5,000 for I believe the smallest size? Like I'm not sure what they're currently going for, but regardless, it's 5,000 too much. This is no better than Balenciaga's trash bag. But even then, I feel like the Balenciaga trash bag looks like it's better constructed. I feel like the leather looks a lot more supple, especially up top where it's supposed to cinch shut. I mean, still absolutely ridiculous, don't get me wrong, but you know what I mean. It looks better made for a trash bag versus the 22, where you know you're going to ruin your bag if you even so much as try to cinch it shut. So I'm totally not surprised that this bag has had so many quality issues with the peeling and the cracking with the leather, the alleged leather. I honestly don't know what it's made of either. Um, so I say save your $5,000 and get a mini flap instead if you are really wanting to throw that amount of money at Chanel. I mean, I, at the end of the day, there's absolutely no need for anyone to spend that much on a trash bag. Again, unless you really want a Chanel trash bag, then please just you do you. Now the next two on my list are more like trendy bag styles than actual bags, but I feel like there are some very iconic bags that represent these styles. So up next, let's talk about the mini trunk bag. Again, I know all of these are my very, very unpopular opinion. I'm just gonna pick on Louis Vuitton for a moment and their recent revival of their trunk bag. So again, we're not talking about their actual classic trunks, but like their recent wave of trunk inspired mini bags. I've seen people rave all about them. We've got the wallet trunk, the soft trunk, we got the side trunk, we got the petite mall. So suffice to say, I get it. It's a very popular style at the moment, but here are my two big issues, okay? One, I don't care if it's the soft or the hard version, it looks like a safety hazard. It's a box with metal edges and corners and nuts and bolts. Two, especially when it comes to the hard version of a mini trunk, like 
What are you realistically putting in there? There is zero give, and it's bad enough that the most popular sizes these days are like the tiny clutch versions. Like if you want to get them as works of art to display on your shelf, like that's one thing. And that would be a very expensive piece of art, but I get it. Um, these bags are not cheap, but to actually want to use them, I honestly don't see how these are bags people would actually reach for to use. And last up, this is kind of along the same lines, but I'd say anything vanity. Again, these have become so popular that I can't even pick a brand to hate on, right? Chanel has them, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Versace, and more recently, I know Laura Piana has had um, one that's been trending for a while now. So obviously your contemporary designer brands like Longchamp, et cetera, they are all jumping on the vanity bandwagon as well. And I just don't see the appeal. Like, why are you using this as an everyday bag? In most cases, these vanity bags are even bulkier and they fit less than the trunk bags because the shape of these vanity bags or these vanity cases are typically more squarish um, than rectangular and flat. So if you were to wear them cross body, like they will be sticking out quite a bit. Now my other issue is, let's say if you wanted to put like the smallest of card holders in some of these, they're just not gonna fit. Like maybe if you put them in cross diagonally, which makes even less sense. So here I'm thinking of like the Chanel mini vanity cases. Like it's not even like a free cosmetic pouch that can pass as a clutch or that can be converted into a decently respectable crossbody or shoulder bag. Like it looks like a vanity case. And I just feel like of all the options that are available out there, of all the bags that exist, like, like why would you do this? <laughs> Again, I know these are just my unpopular opinions, but I'd be curious to know what you think of this list. What other bags would you add? Like what are some of the bags that everyone seems to go nuts over and you're just like, I really don't get it. I'd love to know, so please leave me a comment down below. And as always, thank you so much for joining me today. And if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you next time.